heaven must have sent her my way. Why do you think it is? Some people are brain surgeons and some people have to make the living delivering lino. It's because God's not a socialist. <laughs> what do you think he is, then? I think he's like our Mr Scrimshaw on a very large scale. <laughs> I can't see God with a wife called Emerald. <laughs> anyway, do you really think you want to be a brain surgeon? I'm toying with the idea. Would you really want to spend the rest of your life messing about in people's heads? I might. I just might. With the same hand you eat your fish and chips with. I mean, <laughs> you'd never be able to enjoy a fish and two penneth again. So what do you do, do you think? Brain surgeons eat fish and chips. Don't you think they do? Well, it's not likely, is it? I mean, you're not going to put your life in the hands of someone who's coming at you with greasy fingers. <laughs> they wear gloves. To eat fish and chips, they wear gloves. It's a five-year course at university. Most of the last year is taken up in how to do things like eat fish and chips with gloves. Where do you think you are, lad? The Mecca Ballroom? <laughs> hey! Oh, 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 that great long muth in Seymour. I think you've outgrown your mental strength. Don't ever come blasting in here like that. Oh, you're all right. Scrimshaw's inside. If you saw anything flying past you then, it was my heart. I can feel it pounding. And I mean a real pound, not just a fraction under, like in grocery and provisions. Where are you going with this lino? What's it to do with you? What are you, secret lino, Inspector? No, I'm serious. What's the address? Well, I don't know. I've not looked at the address yet. It's the Laurels, 15 the Avenue, isn't it? He's psychic. Seymour's psychic for lino. I heard Scrimshaw telling you. So what? So what? You know who lives there, don't you? I mean, you know who it is you're going to be walking in on, don't you? Miss Deborah Norbury, that's all. Oh, ain't love grand. Miss Deborah Norbury? You're wasting your time there, Seymour. Oh, she only despises me temporarily because I'm working at the co-op. When I become something more significant, it'll all be all right. I want you to try and have a word with her. No, 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 that won't do. She won't speak to tradesmen. Just give her this note. And don't let her mother see you. It's a great responsibility, Seymour, for a tradesman. And a brain surgeon. <laughs> don't cock it up. I'm relying on you. I want you to remember that for me, happiness is Deborah Norbury. I think he's crackers. Well, you should know, being a brain surgeon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
stupid co-op pillocks. That shouldn't be riding fast asleep. Thick as a brick. He seems to know you, Sherbert. <laughs> Who is he? Ah, it's Chunky Liversey. Butcher's lad. Hello, Lena. And young Sherbert. How's your boy, old Sherbert? It's nearly better. He's lying. That's another one. The one she means is nearly better. <laughs> you work with Seymour Utterthwaite, don't you? He's in gents' wear. I know, he sold me dad a pair of trousers. They didn't fit. <laughs> Very tall. Oh, not me dad, Seymour Utterthwaite. It's crackers. But very tall. Who left that van thing parked in the street outside our house? We brought you line, old missus. Who gave you permission to park that van thing outside our house? I don't care to give the neighbours the false impression I do my trading with the co-op. We usually buy all our superior goods from Brown Muffs in Bradford. <laughs> <laughs> Will you kindly move that van thing at once? But what about your line, old missus? That's not the pattern I ordered. I distinctly remember that is not the pattern I ordered. It's the pattern they told us to bring. You were there. Only in a very modest capacity. Is that the pattern I ordered? <laughs> you were undecided between this one and the other one. Finally, you settled for this one. I did not. I distinctly remember I settled for the other one. Will you kindly take that one back and bring the other one? And this time, don't park your van thing anywhere near the house. Have you nothing to do, girl? I'm doing it. <laughs> Soon get bored with this lump of lino. She was a right fright with that. Is that what Seymour wants? Her daughter? Her mother in law like that? Oh, I don't think he's in any danger. Deborah's got her sights fixed a lot higher than gents wear. He's an idiot. Oh, I think an idiot is in danger. <laughs> Well, what? Did you deliver the note? We didn't even deliver the line or. <laughs> I asked you to deliver the note. There was a snag in the shape of Mrs. Norbury. <laughs> oh. What shape is Mrs. Norbury? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't care if I never see one again. <laughs> hey, up, you lot, get a move on. Mr. Scrimshaw wants to see you. What have you been up to? Nothing. You're all looking guilty. I always look guilty. I blame adolescents. <laughs> and what's a young man in that frame of mind? I'm going to try for his sympathy. I'll show him me boil. <laughs> Just laughs at boils. You'll have to try TB at least. <laughs> <coughs> Brought it back. You were supposed to sell it, not take it for a walk. <laughs> not been business here to exercise lino. Where's the profit for the society if all you're doing is shunting rolls of lino around the town? 
Why did you bring it back? She said it wasn't the one she ordered, Mr Scrimshaw. And why wasn't it the one she ordered, Mr Scrimshaw? What are you doing taking people the wrong lino? <laughs> are you lino blind? <laughs> It was the one she picked, Mr Scrimshaw. The customer is always right, lad. Especially in an argument with a junior lino salesman. <laughs> you better take her the right one this time. You don't suppose a customer who lives in a large, detached house can't pick a roll of lino? You don't suppose Mr Norbury got where he is today not being able to pick a roll of lino? You go back there. You apologise to Mrs Norbury. And you take her the right roll of lino even if it's the wrong one. <laughs> yes, Mr. Scrimshaw. As for you, lad, you'll be on your own for two hours. I have to step out on society business. That does not mean that you regard it as a bank holiday. There's plenty to do here if you look for it. You should be able to handle the routine. Any emergency, you can telephone me at headquarters. I have to attend a meeting of the management committee. <laughs> they lean on me, you know. <laughs> oh, you can't duck these responsibilities. <laughs> Any queries, see Mr Mooney in groceries and provisions. I shall leave him nominally in charge, even though he wears a white apron. There's an entire commercial underclass wearing white aprons these days. In the absence of customers, you will pay particular attention to your cleaning duties. When I return, I expect to find this place shining. Like that boil of yours, lad. You keep polishing it in. It feels like a bank holiday. Oh, it did till I heard your footsteps. I thought it was a customer. Here, somebody's been smoking in here. <laughs> yeah, probably the last customer. No, oh, I. Listen, I've been thinking. No wonder they were lying down. <laughs> Not a pretty sight. Six foot of gents wear salesmen lying down. <laughs> I've got an idea. I don't like it. You haven't heard it yet. I don't care. I never like your ideas. They all has mean trouble for somebody else. No, not this one. This is perfectly straightforward. Take the notice, Sherbert. It's going to be tricky. I can feel it. Look, there's nothing to it. Listen, A, I want to get a message to Miss Deborah Norbury. Yuck. B, you two have to deliver a roll of lino to the house of Miss Deborah Norbury. Well, that's tricky for a start. Well... I'm in a position to relieve you of that problem. How? Oh. Not you, but him. Now, you'll have to drive, but I can relieve you of the problem. Me? How? By changing places with you. I'll go and deliver the lino. You'll stay here and look after gents wear. I tell thee it were going to be trouble. It was the trouble. <laughs> we'll be back before Scrimshaw returns. I don't like it. <laughs> not only do I not like it, 
but I don't like oh. it. There's, there's nothing to it. All you have to do is stay here and mind the store. But supposing a customer comes in and asks for a suit? Well, you've helped out in gentswear before. You could sell someone a suit. Off the peg, maybe, but what if they want to, to, to be measured? <laughs> You've seen me measure. It's easy enough to measure. Besides, who's going to come in for a measured suit? Today's always slack. You know it is. Surely you're not going to stand in the way of me having a few moments with Miss Deborah Norbury? It's going to go wrong. <laughs> Feel it. It's going to go wrong. Oh, you'll never regret this. I'll stand by you through thick and thin. What do you think, sir? But say something. You're a pillock. <laughs> Why does he know? He's got boils. I felt lonely at work. There's something sinister about an almost empty co-op. It felt like the fort in Bow Jest. <laughs> oh, hello, Foggy. Nipping in the back way again. A man needs some relief from that highways department foreman. I like this one. That's khaki. Oh, oh, so it is. Well, uh, I like khaki. Mind you, I like field grey as well. Field grey? That's the away team, isn't it? <laughs> the German army colour, yes, but very smart. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Just because I'm going to be killing them without betraying a flicker of emotion doesn't mean I can't respect the uniform. <laughs> How are you going to kill them without damaging their uniform? When it's hand to hand. When it's you or the other bloke. When there's nothing but this red mist of battle fury. You mean like when they let the kids in at Saturday morning pictures? <laughs> You're not really killer material, are you, Cleggy? I wish you'd pass that on to the war office. <laughs> I don't blame you. In many ways, it's a lonely life. When you're not training your body to its limits, you're preparing yourself mentally. Like exams. For killing people, you have to take a written test. <laughs> oh, you have to be razor sharp mentally. You have to be faster than the enemy. Isn't that your foreman coming? Oh. <laughs> that seemed fast enough. <laughs> well, here we are alone in gentswear. And here's hoping we can stay alone in gentswear. <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do if somebody a really funny shape comes in for a suit? <laughs> Could I talk him into a roll of lino? <laughs> a really funny shaped roll of lino. What's that doing, Norm? I'm holding the fort. <laughs> Just keep your eye out for the Arabs. It's terrible. I'm here on my own. It's all quiet in here. It's like 
A church. I know, I just saw the wrestling with Vicar. <laughs> I just hope it stays quiet, that's all. What am I going to do if a customer comes in? Ah, they'll be all right. Now to it. Look at my hands. I'll have to go wash my hands. At least I can have gents wear hands. You stay here a minute. Keep your eye on things. Bloody worries it I'll be. <laughs> Leave it to simmer night. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Good afternoon. Have you been waiting long? Is there no staff about? <coughs> staff? Oh, I'm staff. <laughs> You're in gents' wear? Well, I'm, uh, I'm helping out. <laughs> what can we do for thee? The wife says I have to have a suit made. She's fed up of me in the same old suit. Oh, well, that's come to the right place. <laughs> I know how it feels. Same old suit. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> Come on, get a shift on. What's the hurry? That's got a customer. <laughs> oh, God, what does he want? He wants a suit. Well, have you tried him one on? Not front peg. Made to measure. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> what are you stopping here for? Because she won't let us park in her street. But it's miles. It's only the next road. Oh. I'm going to be in a fine condition to see Deborah after staggering through the streets with this lot. Don't complain to me. Tell the mother-in-law. <laughs> Get out of that end. How tall are you? 5'11". 5'11". 5'11". Oh, we got that one right for a start. <laughs> she usually comes with me to pick a suit. But I thought, no, I'll show her. She thinks I'm a twit. <laughs> but I can pick my own suit. Thirty-seven. What? Thirty-nine? Thirty-nine? Oh, uh, <laughs> Spit the difference. Thirty-eight-ish. Thirty-eight-ish. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look? For delivering Lino, that looks okay. 
But I look like someone used to better things, just helping out, don't I? I mean, I don't look like I do this for a living. Get a move on. <laughs> How long has he been in gents' wear? Not very long. <laughs> he certainly gives that impression. <laughs> I think about 28. Well, that'd be mine, though. What shall I put down? Well, I don't want to make it too short. Put down 32. <laughs> 32. <laughs> Where the hell is that Seymour? Good afternoon, Mrs. Norbury. I thought I'd better come along and supervise things personally. You remember me, Mrs. Norbury? I'm Utterthwaite. Seymour Utterthwaite. Your daughter and I are very good friends. Ah, Deborah. I can't believe our Deborah would know a person who works for the co-op. I'm the one with the three-wheeler. Even if you do have a bicycle. <laughs> job you're tall because you're not very bright I can say that again do you want a cuppa no yes he does we'd love a cuppa I'm not always gonna be in gents wear I've got ambition one lump or two I'm going places he'll have two lumps same as me they'll be sorry when I'm somebody round here you are somebody you're just not somebody round here <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how well off you are. The worst thing that can happen to anybody is getting involved with the Norbury's. Ah, she's right. Nope. I refuse to be comforted. Do you want a bun? Oh, yes. I wouldn't mind a bun. Thank you. Ta. Today's the day Mr. Singleton comes to collect his suit that I measured. <laughs> Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? You don't look well this morning. You haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Wait until I come home. Now, don't go lifting anything heavy. I think life's a big enough burden, actually. Has he formed some romantic attachment? You haven't, have you? No, I haven't. I hope it isn't some painted creature. Well, it's a nice thing to say to a man in my profession. <laughs> well, he's too young for anything of that nature. How old were we? I wish you'd go and paint something. <laughs> Step out when you're ready, Mr. Singleton. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> Possibly a minor adjustment here and there. <laughs> 